Welcome, my friends, to another episode of Bottom Shelf Project. As always, I'm your host, Carrie. This is my good friend, John. Hi, Richard. everybody. Richard, unfortunately, can't be with us today, but he's here in spirit. <laughs> no and, pun intended. And uh, we are here with another fine offering from a local distiller for us, Citrus Distillers, um, with their corn whiskey. Yeah. I was at my to lo local Total Wine recently, and I saw this in a display with the rest of their products. And when I see a 100% corn whiskey for 15 bucks, 15 bucks. I'm gonna buy it because I, I, I tend to want to support my local vendors anyway. Yeah. And these guys kind of fascinate me a little bit because they're from their website, they're they're angling to be like a, a little mini MGP, Midland Grain Processors, yeah. where their primary business model seems to be they'll just do the distilling, you tell them how you want it made, and they'll make your product for you. Um, pretty interesting stuff, but they do have a, a side gig, and we have reviewed, I believe it's the Cocoa Whiskey, yeah. and I've had another one of theirs before this, and um, we can go ahead and cut to a spoiler. If you can't tell, yeah, I, I, I already like this. He necked the bottle just a tad. Just a tad. Just Not, a little bit of a neck. In my defense, I've had this for a while. <laughs> um, this is a, a, like I said, it was 100% corn whiskey, bottled at 40% 80 proof. Um, but they don't really pro provide an awful lot of information beyond that. I, uh, by the way, have never touched this. Yeah. So, I'm the virgin. Now, the other reason why I got in on this is because my little redneck heart loves corn whiskeys. There's something low brow and yet <laughs> charming. Which is the whole, that should be the motto of our show. <laughs> low brow and charming. There you go. <laughs> About corn whiskeys. And, and I'd recently been playing around on the Mellow Corn subreddit. There you go. And those maniacs are fun to deal with. And, yes, they and are. I have to admit, I love me some Mellow if Corn. you kind of like Mellow Corn and you're not on the Mellow Corn subreddit, you're making a huge mistake yeah. because that subreddit is tons of fun. Go there now. now Enjoy. I, technically, if it's 100% corn, it could be a bourbon if they barreled it correctly. Because uh, they also have to barrel it for at least two years in new oak barrels. It, is it, it? Can it be a bourbon if it's 100% corn? Because well, I the, thought there had to be... The mash bills, it's got to be at least 50%. Oh, right. So it can be more than. Can yeah, it can be more than. Okay. And it often it is. Um I mean, you've got some like Woodford Reserve, or Woodford Reserve that uses wheat in their yeah. mash bill, but there's usually some rye in there and a little bit of barley. Um, but this is a 100% corn whiskey. And again, like I said, there's just something so uh, charming about corn liquor. And also, just on a note, uh, Citrus Distillers, the one thing I love about them, I'm a bit of a font nerd, just a bit. Not, I'm not too uh, weird. But the, the label on this thing is so well done with such a great traditional font, and I love that. I'm glad you brought that up because when I was uh, talking to somebody on the, on the Melicorn subreddit about this and went to look it up, you have to look for it. Uh, they've rebranded. They now call it Protect the Revenue Whiskey at Total Wine, and the bottle looks different. Oh, what a bummer. Does this look better? Yes. Okay. All so right. maybe I can post a, uh, an image of what the new bottle looks like in the doobly-doo. But uh, let's, let's hit this it. guy a shot. And Corb, you can't use Glencairn for, mellow, for, for a corn whiskey. No. It's like, I don't know how long this has aged, but I'm guessing it's, it's at least 24 months. Yeah. Glencairn, Glencairn for corn whiskey is like having silk sheet covers in your 4x4. It's, it's not going to work. Hey. So what do you get out of that? Because I I, I'm already biased. Well, I, obviously corn. Got to show chocker. I go one step above. It's almost like Halloween candy corn. Yeah. <laughs> but not like circus candy when I go in. We're getting buzzed. I mean, not, not circus peanut sweet, but no. back when I was still young and I even thought that the different layers of candy corn were different flavors. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> <laughs> I used to try to bite them. Like, I'm going to bite off the yellow part and taste the yellow part. I'm going to bite the white part, taste the white part. And bite, like, I used to actually try that. Yeah. So, 
after you get the little the white tip off, you smelled the orange. This is what that orange smelled like. Exactly. That is exactly what. Other than that, like. not an awful lot there. It's really pretty simple. It's not very complex. Let's do this. Mmm. Mmm. That's definitely a tongue tingle. What's the uh, alcohol percentage? Forty percent. Forty percent. As opposed to stuff like a melicorn, which is bottled in Dawn, and it's a, it's a hundred proof. It's bottled fifty. I mean, there is like a hint of vanilla in there to mm -hmm. me. There's a, a tiny bit's peeking out now. Mmm. That's good. It's that's a damn good fifteen dollar bottle of whiskey right there. Like, I mean, if you like corn whiskey, if you're not in the corn whiskey, you won't like this. So but we like it. That's fine. My perspective. This is pretty indicative of most other corn whiskeys. Now, it doesn't have some of the presence that Miller Corn has, but it's also 10% less by volume alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, corn whiskeys typically are one note. There's not a lot of complexity there. There's no subtlety. It no, is what it is. It's got a, a sweetness to it. There's a little bit of the, a tiny bit of the barrel, some vanilla, maybe a little bit of caramel. Like I said, um, there's some vanilla in it. In it's it one me. note. But it's a good it's note. It's a really nice note. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a like good a Philip Glass song. <laughs> <laughs> so that one note happens to hit perfect pitch. Although I doubt Philip Glass would touch corn whiskey, but that's you know, you know. he doesn't know what he's missing. Sad. So bastard. um, yeah, much like most of my ancestors, this is uncomplex, simple, but but it it does the job. <laughs> right. Low brow but charming. Now, mm. I can sip this stuff neat. And I can enjoy it. Yeah, I have to. Agree. And obviously, I have. <laughs> um, I pour, I've, I've had it over rocks. I've had it neat. Enjoyed it both ways. Um, but what would you see? What would you think of if you were going to make something out of this? Honestly, I think it'd be great in Coke. I really do because of that vanilla note. And let's be honest, Cokes are loaded with high fructose corn syrup anyway. Mm -hmm. Unless you get the Mexican Coke. That's true. That's true. Which you can get in Florida. And I have. Yeah, broke out the rocks glass. Uh, a little splash of Coke there. And we both uh, fortified it with some uh, corn whiskey to uh, our desired octane levels. Here we go. Mm. Yep. Simple. Smooth. And in the initial tasting, unlike some of the other whiskeys of this type, which I didn't, didn't taste any peanut in it, now that the corn's in it, I taste a little bit of peanut. Just a little just, just, just a tiny bit of that roasted it. peanut flavor you get with, with uh, mm. bourbons. But. Mm. Clean, light. Really simple. Harmonizes well with Coke. You know what would go really good with this too? A little wedge of lime. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like a Cuba Libre with this would be. Do they grow corn in Cuba? I don't know. That's a communist thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Do commies eat corn? Uh, but at any rate, yeah, for 15 bucks, man, you can't go wrong with something like this, especially now that bourbon is getting out of hand with its pricing. Yeah, right? it's, it's kind of sad, too, because it's, I mean, this is the double-edged sword about the whole whiskey revolution that's been happening in the last, you know, eight or ten years or so, is what used to just be this little fringe thing has now become really popular across the nation. You know, it's just like in the early 2000s -ies, the aughts as yes. they call them now back in the aughts as the kids say the cocktail bar started making resurgence with really good cocktails so now like I wouldn't be surprised if this $15 whiskey by this time next year is like a $30 bottle of whiskey or something like that wouldn't shock me a tiny little bit so it is well, it for is some reason of... mellow corn and it's yellow 70s label has managed to say love that label. I love that label. It's it started at nine bucks, and we still haven't reviewed it. Yeah, but it started at nine bucks, and I've seen it peak at like twenty. Mellow corn. The mellow corn label looks like the firecracker label on black cats. <laughs> yes, For black it does. cats fireworks. <laughs> yes. If you are from the south, you know black cats. Yeah. <laughs> black so cats fireworks. I, I'm hopefully that, that something like a corn whiskey is so simple and straightforward. And not boutique enough to where this will be the last category of beers that will really be touched. If you ever see artisanal corn whiskey, you find whoever made that and you punch them in the face. 
Tell them, and tell them we sent you. Yeah. Now, there, if you took this straight out of the, the um, straight out of the still, and and bottled it, yeah, that would be some damn fine white wine. Yeah, it would be. Mm, that'd be nice. That is what there. five generations ago, yeah. my ancestors probably drank out of ceramic jug. You know what I've been meaning to do too, just just as an aside. This has almost nothing to do with what we're talking about. Just a quick aside is um, uh, a couple of years ago, somebody wrote this article, uh, whiskey and literature pairings. Like a famous piece of like literature it. you should read I while like drinking it. this whiskey or this cocktail. And I, most of it I was like, oh yeah, okay, that's a funny, yeah, all right, ha ha ha, you know, yeah, we'll have a gin and tonic while we read, uh, you know, The Great Gatsby. What, I don't, I don't remember 90% of it, but it was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Until it got to the part where it was like, you know, well, white dog, you know, white lightning and No Country for Old Men, which is a fantastic book. Like, in, in the history of literature and film, there's only been like three or four films that equaled the book. That's one of them. They're not exactly the same, but that book, Cormac McCarthy's No Country for Old Men is so such a good read and that film is such a masterpiece and both of them deserve a really good whiskey and the white lightning white light harmonizes with it and at least in intent i have not read it oh my God, but i did so see good. it if you don't like cormac mccarthy just unsubscribe right now i'm kidding <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm not gonna be that pretentious but so i do like cormac mccarthy so as our light is dying Obviously, because when I brought this bottle, it's going to be thumbs up for me. Oh, yeah. big, huge thumbs up. And again, up. unpretentious, simple, straightforward, oh, cheap, not subtle. It is what it is, but yeah. lowbrow, but charming. Just like us. That's it. So until next time, <laughs> drink Cheers. what you enjoy. <laughs> there you go.